Calculation groups in Power BI are amazing. They basically let you create DAX patterns that you store in calculation items, and those patterns you can apply to any measure you like. And this way, you don't have to write that many measures, you can work much more efficiently in Power BI. Now, time intelligence is a very common example of how to use calculation groups. But in this video, I'm going to show you three ways in which you can use calculation groups that you might not have seen before. Let's dive in. All right, now the most common example for calculation groups is time intelligence, because for almost any Power BI report, you need calculations like year to date, or year over year, or the percentage growth rate month over month. And if you have to write all of these different alternatives for many different main measures like sales and forecasts, well, that multiplies very quickly. And with calculation groups, you just write the pattern once and then you apply it to the main measures, which can save you a lot of work and a lot of measures. But of course, there are also other ways in which we can use these calculation groups and we're going to have a look at three of them. The first example that I have for you is to use calculation groups to calculate the summary statistics for different measures. Now, let's take, for example, sales. Now, over here, total sales broken down by product subcategory. Now, one option that we would have is to create separate measures. One measure over here that calculates the average, one for the max, one for the min, one for the total sum. Now, these measures we can then take and add to the table one by one. Now, if we want to do exactly the same thing for, let's say, the discount, well, then we would have to write another four measures, just like this. And if we want to do it, let's say, for the forecast as well, another four, and that multiplies very quickly. Now, instead of doing it like this, we can make use of calculation groups. So let me take those measures out again. And now we go to the modeling view. And then over here on the right hand side, we have now the data panel where we see tables and model. And from here, we can add new calculation groups. So for this, you need to be on the November version or later and need to have it turned on under preview options. Okay, now let's click here on the three dots, then choose new calculation group. Now the first calculation item we can call sum and over here we cannot just take the sum of the selected measure. That doesn't work because over here the selected measure returns the value of the measure that you apply the calculation item to. However, instead of that, what we can do is make use of a sum x. And here we can iterate over the main fact table where we have the fields for which we want to calculate the summary statistics. So this could, for example, be here the sales table. So I'm going to iterate over my sales table. All right. And then I want to calculate over here the selected measure. All right, and that's it. Now we have to repeat this three more times. I also want to have the average, max, and min. All right, there you go. Here we have the calculation item for the average, max, and min. And now we just have to rename the calculation group. Let's call this one summary statistics. And the column in that table, we can just call aggregation. All right, now let's use that calculation group in that table from before. So I'm gonna go back to the report view. Now to apply the calculation items that are inside of this calculation group to total sales, we need to add the calculation group to the filter context. Now, how can we do that? We can make use of the filter panel, or we can also add a slicer to the right of it. So let's add a slicer to the right of our table. And then on that slicer, I'm going to at the aggregation column that holds the calculation items. And now we can simply click on the calculation item that we want, for example, the average. And you see, now over here we have the averages and it can switch to the maximum, the minimum, or the total sum that we started off with. And now you might think, well, that didn't save me much time because I still had to write four calculation items that I applied to that measure. However, the beautiful thing is that we can now also use the same patterns for different base measures. So if I slide this a little bit more to the right, all right, and then also add maybe the total discount next to the total sales, then those patterns will also be applied to the total discount measure. So Let's switch here to the average. And now we also have the average discounts for the different product subcategories. And if I want to see the max, I simply click here on the calculation item max using that slicer without having to write separate measures that I showed you before. And that can save you a lot of measures. So instead of that, we can just use the DAX pattern and apply it to any measure we like. All right, time for number two. We can also use calculation groups to activate a relationship. Now, let me show you how this can be helpful. 
For this, we first have to go to our data model. And here we have to zoom in on the relationship that we have between our data table and FCT sales. Now, let me double click on that relationship line. And here you see that relationship is based on the order date. So that means if we show in a visualization the sales broken down by year, it will show the sales amount in the year it was ordered. But what if you want to show the sales amount based on the year it was delivered? Well, then we would have to change that relationship, for example, to the delivery date. Now, there can only be one active relationship at a time. And that can be problematic if you want to sometimes show it based on the delivery date and sometimes based on the order date. However, with calculation groups, we can make this much easier. So for now, let's first create that relationship based on the order date. Click on OK. And now we can make a second relationship. So we can take date a second time and drag it here on the delivery date. Now you see that new relationship looks a bit different. It has a dash line and that means it's inactive. It doesn't really do anything until you activate it. And that you can do in a measure. Now let me show you how that works. I'm going to go back to the report view. I'm going to add a new measure. And this one we can call total sales. And over here we are going to use a calculate function where we say we're going to calculate the total sales. However, now we're going to use that inactive relationship. And for that, there's a function called use relationship. Now, over here, we can specify the two date columns. So over here, we have the delivery date from the sales table. All right. And that one needs to be connected to the date table where we have the date key column or the date column just like this. All right, so instead of using that active relationship based on the order date, it will use the inactive relationship that is based on the delivery date. Now, this is then total sales based on the delivery. All right, now let's see if the results are different. Let me just get rid of that slicer. And let me also take out the total discount. And instead of having here a breakdown by product subcategory, I want to have a breakdown by year and quarter. So I'm going to take the product subcategory out, and I'm going to add over here a new breakdown by year and quarter. Okay, now I want to have the total sales on the right, so let's drag that down. Perfect. Now let's then add our new measure, total sales delivery, right next to the other total sales. Now you see the results are clearly different, and so they are close to one another. However, sometimes you will have products that were ordered in one quarter, but delivered in the other. And therefore, there are small differences between total sales based on the order date and total sales based on the delivery date. Okay, now if I want to do the same thing for the discount, well, I have to write another measure. Or if I want to be able to switch dynamically, well, I would have to make use of field parameters. Now, instead of all that, we're going to make use of calculation groups again. Now, the pattern will be similar to the measure that I wrote. Okay, so over here, I'm just going to copy that. And then we go back to the modeling view. And then over here, we can add a new calculation group. All right, then for the calculation item, let's just paste in what I just copied. All right, and let's rename it to delivery date. And then over here, instead of hard coding total sales, we can again use this selected measure function, which returns the value of the measure to which you apply it. And then it uses the relationship based on the delivery date. All right, and then we just have to do it one more time. So let's add another calculation item, but now where we activate it on the basis of the order date. So let's go over here, new calculation item. And this one is gonna be for the order date. And also here we have to refer to the order date column. And then let's also rename this calculation group, just double click on it. This is then the calculation group for the relationships and the calculation group column name. Let's just call this one active. All right, good. So we have the calculation group called relationships, the column is called active and that holds the calculation items, delivery date and order date. Now let's go back to the report view and over here I want to have only the total sales. So I'm going to take total sales delivery out. And as we have seen before, we can use a slicer to activate the calculation items and apply them to our total sales measure. So I'm going to add a slicer right next to it. And then over here we can go to the relationships calculation group, grab the active column 
And then we have our two calculation items, delivery date and order date. Now, if I click here on order date, nothing happens because the active relationship is already on order date in our model. However, if I switch over here to the delivery date, and now you see all the total sales values based on active relationship between the date and FCT sales, that is on the delivery date, not on the order date. Okay, and if we wanna do the same for total discount or total return amount, well, it works in the same way. We can just drag in these measures, total discount, total return amount. Let me just make this a little bit wider. Okay, and you will see that if I switch over here from delivery date to order date, you see those measures also change because also here, the active relationship is on whatever I selected in that slicer. The DAX pattern gets applied to any measure. So now it's time for example number three. We can also use calculation groups to make our life a bit easier when it comes to conditional formatting. Let's say we want to highlight all of the total sales that are above the average or the maximum and the minimum. Then we could write a measure. Now let me show you the measure first and then how it becomes a bit easier when we use calculation groups. All right, so I'm going to take again this slicer away and let's also get rid of total discount and the return amount. Okay, now I want to have a measure that highlights the maximum minimum. So I go over here, create a new measure. Now let me just copy over the DAX pattern that we need. We need to figure out what is the overall maximum value at the year quota level. The same for the minimum value. Now how do you do that with a max X and a min X, where you iterate over a table that only contains the year and the quarters, calculates the total sales at that level of detail, and then returns the maximum of those values. Now the same for the min, and then with those values we can say, okay, check the total sales for that quarter, is it equal to the max or the min? If it's equal to the max, then return green, otherwise return red. Now, and because we have variables, we need to say return that last variable over there. All right, now I'm going to add it right next to the total sales so that you see how it works. And there you go, here we have green for the highest value and red for the lowest value. Now, of course, we don't just wanna show the text, we actually wanna use it for conditional formatting. So let me just take it out again, go here to formatting, cell elements, and then over here we can say to which field we want to apply the conditional formatting, total sales, background color, FX, and here we can make use of the field value option where we can then look for our measure. All right, now, and there you go, we have green and we have red. And what if we wanna do all of this again for the total discount or for the forecast? Well, then we have to, again, write that long measure and adjust it for these new measures. Or we make use of calculation groups. So let's go for that option and see it in action. Now, of course, the pattern is going to be similar. And now we go back over here to the modeling view where we were before, and we can again create a new calculation group. And here we just paste that pattern from before. Now, instead of total sales, we need to have the selected measure. So select total sales, control shift L, and then just write selected measure. All right. Now there's another thing that we need to update, and that is what we want to return there at the end, because this whole tax pattern will not only be applied when we use total sales in the conditional formatting, but also when we show the actual values. And then instead of the actual values, it will show green and red, which is not what we want. So we're going to make use of a dummy measure, a dummy measure that also will return total sales, but has CF in its name. And that one we're going to use for conditional formatting. Now, it will become clear as we do it. So let me just say if, all right. Now, here we want to check if the selected measure may, name has CF in its name. So we can do this with contains string. Here we have the selected measure name that we want to check. And what we want to check for is CF. All right. Now, if it has, then we want to return green or red, right? Just like before. And otherwise, just the selected measure value. And so that means it is the normal, normal total sales that shows in the table. Now, another thing that we need to adjust is over here, instead of green and red, I'm going to return a one when it's either the max or the min value. And instead of returning over here blank, I want to return the selected measure value. Okay, so we have a pattern. Now, how can we use it for conditional formatting? Well, let's go back. And here we need to add that dummy measure that I was talking about. So new measure. Now, this is going to be the conditional formatting measure for total sales. So let's name this one 
total sales. And what is important is that it has a CF in its name. Now, you can put it at the end or at the beginning. And then over here, we just refer to total sales. All right, now let's go to our table. Done. Choose here formatting options. Then we go to cell elements, background color for total sales. Now over here, instead of field value, we can go for a rule. And then we can look for a measure that we just wrote, CF total sales. And if this one is now equal to one, that means it's maximum or minimum. Now, of course, you can also make it more flexible huh, with uh, maybe a one for the max and a two for the min, however you like. But for now, I just go for one color. And then I want to have, uh, choose the color that you like. Now, over here, I'm going to go for orange. Perfect. And click OK. Now, nothing happened just yet because we didn't apply that calculation item just yet, right? So let's go over here, add again a slicer next to our table. Then we go over here to that new calculation group, which I still need to rename, but let's add it already and activate the calculation item. You see the orange color gets applied. Perfect. Now, of course, we can also add more rules to it so that we can switch between different rules. All right, now let's go back to our modeling view. Let's first rename the calculation group and so that we call this one conditional formatting, highlights, and then maybe as the name for that column that contains the calculation items, we can say this is the rule column. Then here we have our first calculation item. Now I would like to add Two more. Now, let me just copy over the formulas. And the first one is going to highlight everything that's above the average. So over here, let me just paste it in. And the third one, let's add that one as well, which is going to highlight everything that's below the average. Now, you see for the last two, it kind of works in a similar way. However, over here, we calculate the average value based on the selected measure to which it gets applied. And over here, a small adjustment to have when this one gets returned, because now we want to return one when it's below the average value. Now, the logic here after the return statement stays the same. We need a measure that has CF in its name, which is basically just a dummy copy of the measure to which you apply it. Okay, now let's go back over here to our report view. Now you see we have now three options, three calculation items, and I can click on the other ones and you see it nicely highlights those that I want to focus on. Now, what if we also want to do the same for total discount? Well, then we need to take total discount, right? Add it also to the table. Now, no conditional formatting has been applied just yet. Then we go over here and make a dummy measure, which is just going to refer back to the original total discount measure, total discount, and this is CF. Okay, for conditional formatting, and we refer to the total discount measure. And we just repeat the steps from before. And so over here, formatting, cell elements, then we need the total discount measure, turn the background color on, FX, and we can again set up a rule now on the basis of that CF total discount, where it's equal to a one. All right, and then I also want to have it in orange. Click OK. And you see that all of the DAX patterns that we set up with the calculation items also get applied now to the total discount field. Perfect. So you see, that can save you a lot of time writing all of these conditional formatting measures. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that when we set up these calculation items, now let me just open one of them, then over here we are basing that maximum and minimum value on the year and quarter. So that means it can only be used for a visual that uses that level of detail. If you have, let's say, a different visual where you want to highlight the maximum minimum that has a different breakdown, like product subcategory, then, well, you would need to have a separate calculation item for that one uh, where you adjust it to product subcategory. Okay, so it would be nice if this could also be dynamic, but I think there's no way to achieve that. Or maybe you have an idea, then let me know in the comment section below. All right, that's it. These are my three use cases of calculation groups that are a little bit less known, however, can be super helpful. Did you know all of them? Let me know in the comment section below. If you want to start the year by boosting your Power BI skills, then check out my upcoming Power BI design transformation program, which starts in February. It's already the third cohort where we have 28 hours of live sessions where we build reports together and I teach you all of my tips and tricks and everything about how to design a good 
functional report in Power BI. So make sure to check it out. If you want to dive a little bit deeper into calculation groups, then check out these two videos over here where I walk you through some more examples. Thank you for watching. I see you in the next video.